In troubled times, a distressed nation listened to a new and candid voice. I am acutely aware that you have not elected me by your balance. So I ask you to confirm me as your president with your prayers. In this new leadership, honesty and moral integrity are essential. As Gerald Ford becomes the 38th president, he has undergone an exhaustive investigation by committees of both houses. He has met the standards of Democrats and Republicans alike. Without seeking the presidency, Gerald Ford had been preparing for it for a lifetime. His was an American ethic, an obligation to serve, to reach for the highest possible in personal achievement. It showed in the badge of Eagle Scout in achieving the National Honor Society. It showed again as captain of the high school football team. He knew practically every position on the team. The more he learned, the more he helped. And Jerry was 100% in whatever he attempted to do because of, he wouldn't go into anything and do it just half. And when the going was the toughest was when he was the best. It got tougher at Michigan, where he lettered three years and where his teammates voted him most valuable player in 1934. Jerry Ford went on to Yale, where he helped coach the football team and entered law school. There wasn't anything more difficult than to try and do some kind of an outside job and at the same time do your law school work. That meant every afternoon out at the field. This meant that he couldn't do his law school work then when everybody else was in the library and studying. Besides Governor Scranton, this extraordinary class at Yale Law School was to produce Supreme Court Justices Stewart and White. Of the 120, 99 were Phi Beta Kappa. Gerald Ford graduated in the top third. Ford serves in combat through the decisive Pacific campaigns. One duty, manning the aft station guns. Lieutenant Ford had the qualities to prepare and the qualities to act. And this requires leadership of a very high order. The steady day-to-day -day work, the maintenance, the routine, that's what you have to have so that when the crisis comes, you can meet it. On particular occasion, we were attacked by Japanese torpedo bombers. Two of them penetrated the destroyer screen and launched torpedoes. The torpedoes missed, but Ford didn't miss. He fired, and they both went down. In 1948, Lieutenant Commander Ford becomes Congressman Ford. He is re-elected 12 times and becomes leader of his party in the House of Representatives. He was the individual that all of the rest of us uh, selected as the person we wanted to lead us. He was a leader in the sense that he, he recognizes that in our society, a free, a free system, we, we lead by consent, not command. That's a time-consuming process. It requires knowledge and reason. It also re requires emotion and concern and, and caring about seeing something happen right for this country. All is not right in August 1974. There is a failure of trust in the presidency. Inflation gnaws at the paychecks and savings of a tense nation. A war is not yet over. With the experience of 25 years in government and virtually a lifetime of leadership and achievement, President Ford goes to work. He opens the presidency to public view. A war is ended. Inflation is beaten back. Had we known him better, we could not have expected less. Gerald Ford has always been best when the going was toughest. A tough road still lies ahead. The recovery must be completed. The nation must remain secure. We know what President Ford can do. Let's keep to that steady course.